Hey, what's going on everybody? It's I am Kostia here today bringing you part two of my ultimate puzzle rush guide. Now, if you haven't checked out part one yet of this series, I would strongly encourage you guys to do so. That's where I laid out the fundamentals and what I consider the basics of puzzle rush training. And that's where I go over a lot of the absolute necessities when it comes to maximizing your score in puzzle rush and also using puzzle rush as a way of maximizing your chess improvement. So what I want to do for today for part two is move on and start talking about some of the actual puzzles and some of the typical themes that you're going to see specifically in the first 20 puzzles or so, whether you're doing the three minute or the five minute rush. While I give you guys a bit of a breakdown, I'll be playing some of my uh, replays. These are some of my own personal runs from the past couple of days. And I'm going to slow them down. These are going to be playing at half speed so you guys have a chance to better follow the position and see what's going on. So let's talk about these 20 puzzles. Uh, in general, the rating of these puzzles is going to go up to about 1200 or so in terms of the puzzle rating. And in these first 20 puzzles, although most of them are going to be pretty simple, there is going to be a nice variety in terms of different puzzles. So let's talk about what you might see in these first 20 problems. Uh, number one, you're definitely going to see some basic checkmates, some simple main in one, main in two, possibly even main in three problems. Uh, you'll definitely get some simple captures or recaptures where basically something is hanging in the position and it's up to you to capture it. Or for instance, your opponent has captured your queen and it's up to you to now recapture. Now, it doesn't really sound like a tactic, but as I mentioned in part one, one of the most important things to remember about Puzzle Rush is that they're giving you positions where there's a clear best move and there's not always going to be some kind of clean or fancy tactic in the position. Your job is to find the best move, no matter how thematic or non-thematic or obvious or basic it may seem. Next, we'll get some basic tactics, things like the double attack, skewers, pins, and other kind of simple tactics where there's a very clear win of material in one or two moves. And you also get what I would refer to as intermediate tactics uh, that I would still consider pretty simple, but are definitely one step above things like decoys, deflections, and removing the defender. I won't be defining any tactical themes in this video as I think there already exists uh, a bunch of good resources where the basic and intermediate and even advanced tactical themes are well defined. If you guys are interested in that, I'll leave uh, some links in the description below where you can learn more about specific tactical themes. But for now, it's good to know that you'll be seeing some intermediate tactics in addition to the easier ones. Moving on, we'll also see some defense of problems and in general the way a defense problem works is usually you're placed in a situation where you have to find the only defense against the opponent's threat or threats perhaps your king is in check and there's only one safe way to uh, escape the attack and not get checkmated on the next move or perhaps two pieces are under attack and it's up to you to find the only way to save them both uh, defense problems can range from being pretty simple to very, very challenging, but again, main thing to understand is that you're trying to find the clear best move. And lastly, we have endgame puzzles, which I'm putting in a separate category because a lot of endgame puzzles are quite tricky, and I think we can talk a little bit about uh, how to approach them. And they can get especially challenging as you go up because some endgame puzzles will even require you to have some endgame knowledge and fundamental understanding of theoretical positions in order to solve the puzzle, but we'll have to get into that later on. Now, when it comes to basic checkmates, basic tactics, intermediate tactics, and even endgame puzzles, uh, a lot of these are going to be relying on your pattern recognition. So if you're someone who hasn't studied a lot of tactics, hasn't seen a lot of examples, haven't solved thousands and thousands of problems uh, in your lifetime, then this might be one area of chess where you can really focus on and see a lot of improvement. And I would strongly encourage you guys to study things outside of Puzzle Rush, things like basic checkmate patterns, your back rank mates, your smothered mates, and so on and so forth, as well as your basic, intermediate, and advanced tactical themes. Then when it comes to things like simple captures or recaptures, well, there are many puzzles where a lot of stuff might be hanging, and there's not really a thematic solution to be found, but 
simply a mechanical solution where you end up capturing more material than your opponent and winning because of it. For these types of problems, I would say your board awareness and your calculation probably going to be your two most important skills. Board awareness to quickly figure out and reflect on what's happening in the position, who's ahead in material, what do you need to win to get a big advantage and calculation in order to actually work through the X's and O's of counting material, being able to grab more stuff than your opponent uh, is of course a very important skill in chess that you need to be able to execute when given the opportunity. And lastly, I would say for defensive problems as well, a lot of times this comes down to board awareness, understanding whether your king is in trouble and what the opponent's threat is, and figuring out what exactly you need to do to respond to that. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are out there thinking that this sounds great and all, but how do you actually find moves during a run of Puzzle Rush? How do you find the solution quickly? Long story short, it just takes a lot of practice and experience to build up your pattern recognition to a high level, your board awareness and your calculation up to speed as well. Uh, but of course, there are things that we can and should be looking for uh, during the run. Number one, of course, we want to look at our opponent's king and see if we have any possibilities of checkmating them or some kind of unpleasant check. We also want to look at all of our possible captures in the position, as well as trying to identify any of the opponent's unprotected pieces. Of course, many of you guys know the term forcing moves, which I am, of course, referring to here. You basically want to look at all of the forcing moves in the position that you can immediately find. I would say especially for the first 20 puzzles, uh, almost all of them virtually 100% are going to have some kind of forcing solution. You're rarely going to have to find some deep or subtle nuance. So if you see yourself thinking and calculating for many moves and looking for some kind of deep resource in the first 20 problems, chances are you're overthinking it, you're missing some kind of simpler resource, and you should go back to the position and take a fresh look. Now, when I say forcing moves, I do mean checks, captures, and threats, but I think this third category, threats, is the one that players often uh, forget to focus on. Of course, checks and captures can be easy to identify, there are only so many of them, but threats are a much broader category of possible moves. When people say threats, what they usually mean is threats to the enemy king, for instance, a quiet move that threatens checkmate, or threats to some of the enemy's pieces, for instance, attacking the queen, attacking the rook, attacking the knight. Sometimes even one move attacks can lead to tactics on the follow-up. For instance, you attack your opponent's queen, queen has to move away, and next move you might get a double attack on your opponent's king and their knight, winning a piece. If you've checked all of your possible forcing moves and still no solution sticks out to you, I would encourage you guys to just keep thinking and trying to come up with new ideas. It's this process of searching for moves that will actually develop your ability to calculate and find good moves. We're not always going to be able to just immediately spot the solution relying on our pattern recognition, which means that it's really important to build up our skills of searching for moves that are quite hidden and not that obvious in the position. And now just to reiterate what I said in the previous video, when you see a move that looks good, you do want to double check and confirm that it's actually winning. If you see a really juicy check, it's up to you to understand why that check is stronger than everything else in the position. Once again, is it leading to a mate? Is it leading to the immediate win of material? Why is this move concretely better than everything else? You might find yourself in a situation where you have multiple checks that look promising and when you're on this situation you have to remember that the puzzle is probably asking you to find the fastest way to checkmate. You might find it, you might not, but I would say the most important thing above all else when you're training, I mentioned this in previous videos and I'll mention it in time and time again, it's to review the problems you get wrong. If you miss a puzzle because you either didn't know the pattern or you weren't super familiar with the pattern, or even if you knew the pattern but just didn't recognize it in that particular moment, the main thing that's going to generate growth in terms of your tactical strength and vision is reviewing the puzzles that you're missing as these are the patterns that your brain has to work on 
remembering the most. So now I'll be taking a look at a couple of my runs and hopefully sharing with you guys what I'm identifying in each puzzle before pulling the trigger and making the move. Uh, it's going to go a little bit quickly even though it is playing at half speed so I would encourage you guys to pause in any of the positions if you would like a little bit more time to think about what I just said or just to evaluate the position at hand. And this first one is, feels like it's going to be a back rank mate. Indeed, white leaves it open. We got rookie one check. Knight takes e4. This knight on e4 is hanging, so I eventually grab it. Here we have another weak back rank. That's easy to spot. Here looks like f7 is hanging. That's a checkmate. Here we have a pretty thematic two rook mate in the endgame. Next one here, we have an endgame. I quickly realize I need to push my pass pawn and make a queen. This is pretty common for endgame puzzles. This is a typical trick of removing the defender. The king was defending black's queen, and now it's free. And this is a skewer. I would say this is a simpler tactic, but it shows up later. Here we have rook b6 check, leading to a discovered attack. Now we have another main and two, this time with the pawn. Here I quickly recognize the typical fork, knight c7, knight takes rook. <laughs> Eventually I'm able to grab the rook. And we have to make one more move there to trap the knight. Here white's king is... In trouble and I quickly go in for the mate. Important to find mate in one here. Now our queen is under attack and looks like we can give a counterattack with queen a4 and I hesitate here because I realize I don't want to just take immediately. I find a better move. Here we have mate in two. Now looks like the rook on f1 is hanging but we have to keep in mind the queen on e5 so we trade queens first grab the rook on f1. Again that's the kind of mechanical calculation that you sometimes have to do here we have another back rank mate i was able to recognize that one here a kind of a weird position but it turns out we have knight c2 check and queen d3 mate here it looks like white's bishop on e2 is hanging and then the king walks into a knight fork here knight d5 is played looks like a lot of stuff is under attack i noticed that the knight on e2 is hanging and so we're just going to grab the piece and go a piece up into the end game here another mess looks like black's king is under attack so I look for a way to checkmate it and I see that I have bishop c5 and knight takes f7. Moving on to the next set of 20 puzzles here that was a free rook that we just took. Here was some more free material. This one queen takes g2 is hanging mate. Here we have a back rank checkmate with rook to e1. For some reason, it takes me a second to actually see it, but that's all right. Here we have a thematic mate on h7. Here it looks like we have a check followed by, well, at first I thought the king was going to h2, but then white blocked, so we trade queens and we pick up that rook. Here the bishop on d6 is pinned, so we push and we win the piece. Here we probably have a th very thematic queen h5 check. This one is a very common way of winning the game. Um, here it looks like something might be hanging, bishop on c5, only defended by the king, so we give a check. We take this rook and then we take the bishop on c5. Um, now it looks like we have a check with a double attack, picking up the rook. White gives a check and we have to make sure that we move our king to the square where our knight was defended. Here it looks like white's king might be in danger and so I look for an accurate mate. This one is a very thematic trick, remember this one, the discovered attack and then making the queen. Here we take on c6 and bishop takes c5, winning a piece. Black sacrifices their knight and yeah, nothing wrong with just taking it. Here another very thematic checkmate with the two rooks. I've seen that one many times. And here it looks like we've got knight f4 with a nice double attack on the queen and the g2 pawn. I recognize the pawn was defended at the last possible moment. Then grab the queen, grab the queen there as well. Here queen takes d5, looks like walks into bishop e6 skewer and we pick up the rook. And this is a puzzle I've seen a few times at this point, but yeah, we got b5 trapping that bishop. Um, here it's kind of a mess. It's white to play. Eventually I figure out we have queen d3 check, followed by launching the rook up on the d-file and winning black's queen, all with check. Uh, here we have a, kind of a tricky position, but I quickly spot we have f5. And the key point there was that if the bishop had grabbed, we would have had queen to d5 check. So with that, we'll wrap up the video here. Once again, I'll leave you guys with some training suggestions. Try to train consistently. 45 minutes to an hour a day is much better than doing five hours on the weekend and then no hours the rest of the week. 
try not to rush during the runs. Again, the point is not to develop good guessing habits, but rather good solving habits where you're actually seeing the tactic that you're supposed to be finding and you're seeing the right idea and the combination play out and you're actually calculating things rather than just guessing or choosing a move that looks thematic or appropriate for the position. Well, I hope you guys keep grinding. And if you have any questions on anything we covered or any questions you want me to address in a future video in this series, do leave them in the comments below. And once again, if you enjoyed the video, please do leave it a like or a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, I would really appreciate it. It really does help us out a lot. I'll be continuing this series by taking a look at some more advanced puzzles and advanced concepts next time, uh, as well as uh, I'm planning on doing a video on the specifically the defensive problems and the endgame puzzles in Puzzle Rush as well. Give you guys some good pointers there. Uh, but for now, Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you next time. Take care.